Ladies and gentlemen, this is what institutional failure looks like. It is the summer of 2016, and the political agency, Cambridge Analytica, allegedly conducted an illegal coordinated data collection effort, compromising over 220 million Facebook accounts, with the goal of manipulating no less than the American presidential election itself. So let's for fast forward to today. Today, we find many instances of institutions using our personal data, our identities, in untrustworthy ways. And on a daily basis, there are so many institutions that we willingly put our trust in. What are we going to do when these institutions aren't functioning the way they're supposed to? What are we going to do? Corporate institutions control our digital networks. They control our services. Whereas governmental institutions govern our voting rights, our healthcare, even our very democracy itself. So before and during the 20th century, institutional failure was relatively easy to spot. It involved a military coup or a revolution of some sorts. However, in the 21st century, it is not that easy anymore. It is different, and in some ways, I would say more scary. What is happening is that we see a slow, gradual erosion. So this opens up a terrifying possibility. Namely, democracy could fail while remaining intact. And all of this has to do with personal identity. At the core of this erosion are you and I, billions of individuals willingly feeding our personal data into the institutional machine. Do you know who knows who you are? Do you know how many algorithms make decisions daily based on your behavior? If we don't understand what role we play in this infinitely complex web we have created, how can we hold institutions accountable? Do you even know who has access to your passport data right now? So if we lose our identities, this is something we need to take very, very seriously. No company is going to live forever. No government is going to live forever. Yet, we've willingly placed our trust into these impermanent institutions. Today, in Syria, there are many, many of its citizens trying to reclaim their identities. Because if you don't have a formal identity, you cannot vote. If you don't have a formal identity, you cannot work. If you don't have a formal identity, you don't count. Actually, over two billion people in the world have no documents. So no papers, no prospects. This must change. We need a new way to reclaim our identities. And surprisingly, blockchain might have an answer. Blockchain-based identity could be our fail-safe, a way back when institutions are eroding. Blockchain-based identity could help us pave the way for a more equitable form of democracy. Let me show you what I mean. Right now, we're all like little dots. And we have relationships with big dots, the ones who control the flow of information. Facebook, Google, governments. Without these relationships, you don't exist online. And in many parts of the world, you don't exist at all. So this model of identity naturally has flaws. Let me show you what a blockchain-based ID could look like. You're different things to different people. You share different things with a tax agency, your landlord, or your Tinder date. And within all this complexity, it becomes clear that it doesn't make sense for a couple of big dots to have a monopoly on all your identifying data. So what if many trusted third parties could verify smaller aspects of your identity? This is a complete paradigm shift. 
Modern identity is a web of relationships, so why wouldn't the person to connect the dots be you? We all know that there is an obsession with over-collecting data. If you go to a hotel, you're asked for your ID and your passport. The very same documents you use to cross borders. So who knows what's happening with this information the next day? So ask yourself this, why wouldn't we limit identification or information requests to a need-to-know basis? Why does an entity need your nationality, your date of birth, your gender, when all they really wanted to know is, is this person older than 18? Now imagine we all go back to that same hotel, and instead of asking for your passport or traditional identification, your hotel could contact your travel insurer, verify your identity claims, verified and stored on the blockchain, and get a binary confirmation. Is this person older than 18? Yes. Easy as that. So by building many of these relationships, institutions and other services can interact with you, acknowledge you. And retaining control of our identity is tremendously important. And I will give you three reasons why. So first of all, making our identities stronger makes our claims to human rights stronger. If the institutional system in your country collapses, you could still prove you are you. Your identity can no longer be taken away from you. Secondly, identities can be abused. Throughout history, people have been prosecuted for their political beliefs, which God they pray to, or even who they loved. It's easy to imagine how this overcollection of data could lead to Orwellian situations. Today in China, faces of jaywalkers are published on billboards. This is real. You're looking at the pinnacle of artificial intelligence, the Internet of Things, facial recognition, all working together to create public shaming in the Internet age. So that's a bit disappointing. But now imagine that you live in China and you didn't pay your parking fees. While people on that list have found themselves blocked from borrowing money or booking flights. So public shaming is an incredibly slippery slope. It goes from funny to creepy in a heartbeat. Well, third and last, identity has value, and we need to protect it. And we don't need to look far back to understand why. In 2017, Equifax was hacked. Over 140 million US residents found their personal data exposed to hackers. So entire identities have been stolen, entire credit card ratings have been ruined. If your credit card rating is ruined, you cannot borrow money, you cannot buy a house. Those are serious consequences. So just take a moment to consider the type of damage a person can do pretending to be you online. And this phenomena is very important because it extends to fake news. If we cannot tell forgery from reality, it becomes easy to question the authenticity of anything and politicians are already using this today to avoid accountability. So how, how did we get here? Well, traditionally, it made a lot of sense to gather data centrally to prevent local distortions. But I would argue that identity is different, and that is because it is determined on a hyper-local level, namely you. You have the right to change your mind. You have the right to change your marital status. You have the right to change your religion. And you also have the right to, to share this information in a way that it won't be used against you. So if identity is the most powerful thing, the most valuable thing that we own, and I strongly believe it is, then democracy is the most valuable institution we have created. Democracy allows us to institutionalize our voices, creating a world in our own image. But it stops working when we lose our voice. So how do we reclaim our voice? Our voice to inform companies, not ask. 
what information we are willing and not willing to share. Our voice can speak loudly to governments and be heard. By removing the monopoly of identification from corporations, from governments, blockchain-based identity can turn the tide. Identity is a fundamental asset of interaction. It is the very first step towards humanity in our data-driven society. We need to be able to control our own identities, because that is the basis of democracy. Thank you very much.